Alright, so we've got newest preview of Mustard OS here. And uh, this is the 64-bit preview build that we've been working with. So right here, we actually have a new core. This is a uh, duct station, 64-bit duct station running at 2x internal resolution. Um, keeps pretty good frame rate. When you have it at just the regular 1x resolution, it runs absolutely flawlessly. Um, but even with the 2x, we're still getting near full speed most of the time. Uh, this one right here is going to be Swan Station, running the same game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. Um, the, Squan, the Swan Station core is a little bit heavier than the, uh, the rearmed core that we used by default before. Um, but here you'll see, again, this is 64-bit, 2x resolution, and it's able to keep mostly above 50 FPS um, while I'm going around the warehouse. And sorry for the terrible quality and everything. I do not have the equipment set up to make videos like these. And I'm having to be fairly quiet because I've got two sleeping children and a sleeping wife not far from where I'm at. But yeah, so here's Swan Station. You can see there's a little bit of a glitch right there at the beginning. And also when doing the grind, there's an audio glitch that you can get. But other than that, it looks great. It plays pretty great. Um... Moving to the 64-bit, it's, it's really opened up a lot of possibilities for us, not just in new cores, but in improvements in the previous you know, cores and external emula emulators um, that we've already been using. So that's the end of that one. Now we're going to move on to, this is Mufin 64 Plus Standalone. Um, it's running the dynamic recompiler, and it is running um, the Glide N64 um, plugin. So this is Diddy Kong Racing. This is at uh, 320 by 240 resolution, um, but it runs flawlessly. When we were running the 32-bit kernel, and uh, I tried to run this, it, it had all kinds of audio stutters and just did not run well at all. And even though it says in the, the FPS display in the bottom that it drops down to like, you know, 20, 21, whatever, you don't feel it. It's, it's really strange. I'm not sure if it's just miscalculating that or maybe I'm just used to it. I don't know. Um, but Diddy Kong Racing runs just absolutely great on here. This is one of the greatest games of all time. I would kill for a remake or remaster of this. And no one in the comments better bring up that god darn Nintendo DS version because it is a travesty. So I think I just did one quick lap here. Just to see how it played. And I mean it's just full speed all the way. Now we're going to move on. Um, someone had asked me about Pokemon Stadium 2 uh, being a hard game to emulate, so I figured, you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. Um, so I threw it on here, and I was... I, I had tested it before uh, with the, the old preview version, and it was not great. It had a lot of gra graphical glitches, a lot of audio glitches, um, so I wasn't holding up much hope for testing it out tonight, but as you can see in here, um, it does fairly well. The only time I really noticed any big slowdowns was when there was a lot of graphical heavy stuff going on on the screen, so uh, you'll see here in a minute I have Pikachu use uh, Thunderbolt, and like when that happens, um, you get a little bit of a slowdown. I never really played this game as a kid, so I don't know if the color on the Pokeball was always off like that, or if that's a weird graphical thing. Because it's definitely not supposed to be pink and white. It's strange looking. So here's where I used the Thunderbolt, where I was talking about uh, you get the weird little bit of a slowdown. And then here, Chikorita's going to use Giga Drain, and again... 
you get just a slight slow down there for your FPS. But otherwise, it seems really playable. I mean, the, the audio stuttered a little bit during that slowdown, but other than that, it, it plays fine. So I think there's going to be a lot of people that are surprised that this device can pull off something like this. That one. And moving on now to um, next up is the uh, Mopin 64 Plus Next Core and RetroArch. We've got that running now, the 64 bit version. Um, it runs really well. Um, it can handle pretty much everything I, I've thrown at it and tested, it has ran great. I know that Banjo-Tooie is one that's uh, hard to get going, so I decided to give it a test. And the first thing I noticed was, on the previous versions of this that I've used, and on um, the Movement 64 Plus standalone, using the Glide N64 plugin, this is all just a white screen. Um, you can see Banjo, you can see bottles, but everything else is just white with some shadows. Um, but using the 64-bit of this core with the same settings, where you actually get, you know, full color, everything works. Um, it does run a little bit slow, but again, this is one of those harder to emulate games. Um, you can kind of see there's just a little bit of a delay there, but it's nothing major. I would definitely classify the game as playable, not perfect. Um, another just amazing game. The N64 had so many gems of just great games back in the day. And that's going to be it for me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's a lot of really big, awesome things coming your way. So just hold on a little bit longer. Mustard OS or Moo OS, whatever you want to call it. It's about to get a whole lot better. Bye.